Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in, guys. Yes, it is a beautiful Monday. And I'd like to bring you a few articles. We're going to tie together a couple of ends from where I talked about earlier today and uh, just kind of update on what's going on. Um, one of the articles I'm going to update you on is the uh, resignation of that Nunez chick who was saying all that racist remark stuff, who was a city manager, town manager. She's had a pretty high ranking official office so far as in her grassroots movements, which, believe it or not, have a very, very large impact on certain things with integrity. Anyhow, um, in Michigan, SOS um, Board of Supervisor is being uh, called out on for some rules that she recently made for the uh, people that are going to be working the places where you cast your voices, these uh, watchers. And uh, I don't want to use certain words and put them all together because then they'll be like, Ew. but anyways, there's an article on it. I can't show you a lot about it because it talks about a lot of things that we're talking about. And there's recently a, there was a, a protester at one of these things talking about, yeah, we know that that F word exists, but such and such and such. And they are mad because then uh, what happened is because they're mad at another higher up for exposing it, but they know it happens. Hmm. Can't, can't say too much more about that. Anyhow, so I really thank you guys for tuning in. Let me get out of the way here and we'll rock on with some of these articles. Now, let's see if I can get this right the first time, guys. Okay, let's see. Let's see. I hope I'm going to do this right. The first time didn't work out. Anyways, so uh, this. Uh, let me move to these couple of articles first and we'll talk about uh, Nuri. Oh, Nuri. A 21-year-old... York college soccer player was found, passed away, or gone, no longer with us in his dorm room. And read through the article, and uh, the COD is unknown. Okay? Uh, cause of his not being here. Crazy. Now, here's another deal. Uh, Real Housewives. Her name, uh, her arm is Nina Leakes. I wonder what, uh, maybe she's the one leaking a lot of this information to the F from the FBI. I don't know. But anyways... Uh, reveals that her 23-year-old son suffered a stroke and heart attack, ironically. And uh, you kind of know what happened there. Kind of took some of that sauce. Uh, that Fauci sauce. Anyhow, um, John Cleese has officially gone over to the dark side, according to this mainstream article. I love these mainstream articles because it kind of really gives us like a, uh, you know, a thing about what's going on with uh, how they are working in, in, in their little and what's going on with their narrative. But this John Cleese is not, they, when they say dark side, what they mean is the MAGA. But anyhow, John Cleese, once beloved member of iconic comedy sexit, which was Monty Python, has been showing signs of, uh, of roganism for some reason, or for some time now, I'm sorry, for some time. And the transformation is complete with a right-wing outlet of the, uh, 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 the GB News. I don't know who that, I don't know what that stands for. Um, but uh, Great Britain news, maybe. Uh, but Cleese's ground, uh, Cleese's grand return to television by way of a new talk show with the conservative free speech advocate Andrew Doyle. Them, um, its theme: cancel culture. And what they're talking about is cancel culture. Some cancel culture people hate it when you expose them. And so what John Cleese has got going on now is sort of a, I guess, going to be a. I don't know. If there's going to be satire. I know that they. But we need some conservative satire. Like we used to have just neutral with the whole, like, you know, well, Johnny Carson kind of got, he got lefty there towards the, in a few places there. I remember I even was seeing one of these lefties get up on his show and he interviewed him. I talked about population control back in the seventies guys. I was like, I was watching this the other day on a rerun. I was like, Oh my gosh. Wow. This stuff's been going on for a while. But uh, let's hear for John Cleese and standing up for free speech, man. That's really cool. Because I like Monty Python stuff. I don't know how the rest of the people were that he worked with back then, but I'm not going to worry about that. I won't let that dilute the fun that I had watching those programs and watching them have fun with just, uh, just comedy and irony. Love that stuff, man. This New York teacher right here, or a football coach, to see, was... Uh, see, Oh, I'm sorry. New, New York school official was crowd surfing at a high school football game. Just 48 year old dude was uh drunk driving his car they pulled him over they suspected it because of his actions at the football game and there was other people that witnessed him like being kind of like hey this guy's kind of sauced up so and not the fauci sauce neither um nuna Marti Mar martinez resigns as los angeles city council uh, president after a racist comments and you're like well what do you mean racist comments how about this this person right here on the right this, this man, who is of a Caucasian descent, 
or, or you know, if they want to go by skin color, you can see that there. And he adopted a, some of opposite skin color. I'm not, I don't, you know, I think that it's a beautiful thing because everybody needs a home. And he adopted somebody, man. He, he brought life, he brought, you know, brought somebody a good life. And uh, here's Martinez. Okay, okay. So Martinez is going to be talking about this guy right here on the right. Okay. And uh, here is the audio of her talking about this guy. This is on a leaked hot microphone with a, some other council people. Okay, get ready. It's like the oddest thing. It's like black and brown on this float. And then there's this, this white guy with this little black kid who's misbehaved. The kid is bouncing off the effing walls on the float, practically <laughs> tipping it over. There's nothing you can do to control him. So like, Okay, there she is right there. And so, yes, yeah, she is resigned. No more of that. It, well, okay, so you're like, well, that wasn't that bad. That right there, my friend, was an audio that I can play on the YouTubes. <laughs> there is more to that. And I am not playing that audio on YouTube and getting thrown off of here. That was just a little drop in the bucket. So please understand that, that it was bad. <laughs> uh, anyhow. This is another awesome thing right here. This is in another mainstream article and their best way to try to spin some stuff. <laughs> Arizona Republican Carrie Lake booted from gubernatorial town hall audience. Quote or paraphrase, she brought drama. Guys, hold on. Hold your horses. Mainstream article. Let's read about it right quick. This right here is they get the headline up. They want you to read that headline, then move on. She is booted from the audience. Okay. But well, was she booted from the event? Did she do her debate? Yes, she did. And she cleaned the floor. But she done this cool thing where like, she was just kind of trolling Hobbs. And what I mean is like, you're like, what did she do? Like interrupt the whole session of the, the debate while, because the whole premise was Hobbs was going to do a debate with Katie or with Carrie Lake. I'm sorry. Katie Hobbs was going to do a, a debate with Carrie Lake. But the agreement on Hobbs' end was that we, no, they would not be on the stage at the same time. That they would do their debate and then they would get off the stage and then you know, the next person would do their debate. And that was going to be how it was run. That was the stipulation, guys. Okay, so Carrie Lake goes out in the audience and just sits in front of where the podium is so that she's in line of sight with Hobbs. I read through the article, so we, we, I could save you all the trouble of me barely reading. All right, so... Um, and what happened is Hobbs never come out on the stage, but the people seen that Lake was out there kind of like trolling a little bit. And they're like, ma'am, you've got to, you've got to come out. You can't be in the audience. And so that she kind of like went, went back and forth with them for a minute, but she ended up, you know, came falling back and she went into the room to the green room and waited for her turn to come out there on the thing to debate. And, um, uh, you know, <sighs> It's not like it was a sealed green room like a Jerry Springer show or, or Maury Povich where they can't hear what's going on on that stage. So it wasn't like something where they were trying to keep the keep everybody from knowing what was asked and giving them like a or a family feud. It wasn't like that. It was just where she was going to be backstage, not in Katie Hobbs' sight. They would, she would have heard all the questions just like anything else. So it's not like it was giving her any kind of advantage. The questions were already predetermined by Hobbs anyways. And he always to get really daggone, you know, uppity about it. So... With that being said, Carrie Lake did her thing, wiped the floor, everything was rolling on, and everything is good. Carrie Lake is awesome, and Hobbs is a racist. And I believe, I believe, yes, here we go. I have kind of teed this up almost right. Here we are. It's um, uh, photos show Democrat Katie Hobbs embracing this word that starts with an S, and you can read it. I'm just going to let it be on the thing. I'm not going to say that word and get a strickle on my YouTubes, okay? All right. I don't know what their algorithm is and how that works, but we're going to just try to bring this stuff to you and do it in the best way in an efficient fashion. Thank you guys. Uh, this is where this, by the way, occurred in a Catholic school. And, uh, there were, from what I can tell, no students that there, that were, there were no, I hate using skin color, but anyhow, there were no, it was all uh, it was white people. It don't matter if I say that. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, YouTubes. Um, let me show you a video. I mean, not a video, but a, a, a picture right here. Okay, if you can see this picture of what they did here, and they had little posters on the back, and they were auctioning these people off, and they called it, they had a day for it, and it was called this word right here. It was the S, you know, I just don't like using certain words put all together, but this word right here, that uh, this S word, 
after embracing, you see what I'm looking at. There was they called it that word day, and they called it. And it was in the high school of a of a Catholic form school, and she was kind of raised around that kind of rhetoric. And here she is, uh, appeared to have some sort of form of blackface, maybe something like that. Is that would that is that can we constitute that as that in the comment section? Let me know. Uh, moving on here to uh, what we've got here is Russia has now kind of like. You know, all right, guys, this is getting enough. And so things are moving a little more kinetic and they're striking areas where it's more civilian areas to where, you know, hey. And um, with it's amazing how propaganda sure does make things go weird because it's really hard to tell who's doing right and who's doing wrong. It, may, it really throws the normies off and uh, nobody will tell the truth. And for some odd reason, what I think now has happened and how we get into this WW3 situation is that you've got countries like some of the places that I live, I'm living in America here, that seem to be seizing an opportunity to uh, uh, use the ability of the cloaking that's involved when you have these kind of conflicts to cause other conflicts and can blame it on it, whoever they can blame it on Ukraine, they can blame it on Russia. I don't know if that's happening, but it seems like you know, in a tactical move, that that would be a, a thing you could do if you wanted to, if you're really only concerned about yourself and not the world and humanity. So now you've got situations where that's happening, but but Russia's just like, okay, fine, guys, I've just about had enough. Uh, Pooty Poot's like, dude, I'm gonna be all up on you, like stink on Dookie, and um, yeah. You've got missile attacks happening in a lot of the areas like that right now. And um, I've seen some videos. It's pretty pretty gnarly. Uh, they're hitting places like Kiev and all these really, you know, populated areas. And, hey, guys, I tell you, I don't know. <laughs> all I know is that, uh, that uh, Soros really hates the fact that Putin is doing this. And so that's the only thing that I, they could say that's, I can, that I know right there. I don't know where to go after that. But, hey. Make your own judgment. Um, transphobic policy in the Biden regime still requires all trans women to register for draft as men, but trans men are exempt. Ha! Huh. Well, that's enough for that. Who cares? But that's just what they're doing. University of Florida protesters never trumper Ben Zass. Not Ben Sass, but Ben... I mean, not Ben Sass. Ben Zass. You know what I'm talking about. Ben Sass has uh, working for DeSantis. Weird, it's all get out because I think, if I'm not remember right, he did some kind of vote that had to do with an impeachment of, of Donald Trump. And so for some reason, the lefties are pissed off that he's there, but he's kind of like, uh, here, here's some lefty action right here, guys. This is some lefty action going on right there. So, like, all these thumb-shaped people are actually shaking the whole halls. The, the article reads that people could feel the whole building shaking. <laughs> no. So, and, like, and you see in this other little shorty video right here where the people are, like, interrupting. And what was happening was that was a question and answer by Ben Sass. But on a good note, on a good note, 60 high school football players get baptized. Here's a, a, a news article actually talking about it. It's really wild because right now the they they're, the lefties do not want anybody to do anything with religion. So let me get through it. Here, check this In out. In the Teed baptismal up. pool, these are members of Matty T. Blunt High School's football team. This year they face controversy off and on the field. Tonight, they say they're strong enough to handle whatever comes their way because they have God as the head of their team. Judges chapter 6 talks about this young man named Gideon. Gideon was this small little farm. But God calls him to do something incredible. This is how the Blunt Leopards football team started their practice today. Encouraging spiritual words for the presumed underdog when Blunt takes on Theodore on the gridiron tomorrow night. It's a make or break game for the Leopards. Big game this week, right? Yes, sir. What happens if we win? There you go. A trip to the Blunt ties these young men and make a difference in their village that raises our children had football coach as showing up walking in the hallways it is a village that raises our children had football coach josh harris says pastor davis's weekly visits has changed his players for the better and that change is going viral when it carries over to the athletes it carries over to the students so it's working out good 
When this team suits up for tomorrow night, they say their pads are now part of their armor of God. It provides like a coat of protection over me because I know God's on my side. Well, today before practice, more members of the football team committed to getting baptized this Sunday morning. Great news, guys. Great news. Man, I'll tell you what, I figured I'd leave us with that little inspirational video because there's a lot of youth out there that have a wonderful brain of their own and they're going to use it and they see the direction that needs to be gone in. And you know what's neat about it is, is, uh, is uh, if there's, I could go on about Santa Claus and all that crazy stuff and, you know, all I can say is if you put a little bit of effort, put put about Put about 50% of the effort of what you put into and in pushing Santa Claus narrative and maybe give some presents in Jesus name instead of say Santa Claus, Santa Claus, leave some presents under a tree and say this is in the name of Jesus and uh, tell him you gave it to him because you did. We all know Santa Claus isn't real. Don't lie to your kids. <laughs> I mean, you know, my wife, don't, look, I know you guys are like, oh my gosh, he went there. My wife is all she loves some Santa Claus and so we've been around and around this this doesn't <laughs> doesn't go you know doesn't always like I say I, I face opposition so if you oppose me on that I'm okay with that <laughs> but uh Jesus name sure would be like a narrative setting that pace and kind of glorifying the lifestyle of being you know Christian am I good at what I do as a Christian I, I'm trying every day to get better oh there's a lot more people out there that's got this figured out better than me but I'm trying I'm always going to keep working to be a little bit better, no matter how good I think I am. <laughs> uh, but anyways, so thank you guys so much for sticking around this whole video. And just know that, like I say, we are in a weird side. People are going to do some weird things and we're going to see some weird stuff happen. But we don't need to let that try to dilute the fact that we know right from wrong. We see it. So we just got to kind of like when people are, are, are inverted through Marxism and all this stuff that you see happening... That gray area, lefties love the gray area because of the fact that it provides a, 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 a realm of uh, what is wrong and what is right. It's all up to the person that perceives that instead of having actual values and morals and kind of like being, yeah, that's not right. You know, you know, anyways, I could go on for days about that, but I'm going to get, cut this out so we can go. And uh, I just want to thank you guys again. And I want to thank all the people that's been here from the get-go. Please check me out on We'll Fix It with an exclamation point on YouTube because that really helps to stay in contact in case for some reason I get smushed by the tubes and they take this channel out. I can still find you guys or you can find me. But uh, the subs are nice. I'm right on the back door of a thousand subs and then I can get a little more watch time and that channel can help us out. Uh, the, I can, you know, work with that if you know what I'm saying. So anyways... Thank you guys so very, very, very much. Have a wonderful day. God is in control. He loves you guys, man. Sure does. Everybody, bye.